together for me and I actually started an IT company helping small businesses that couldn't compete with the big guys. That was literally the mission statement. If you go to our website, that's what we talk about, is helping small businesses grow that can't compete with large enterprises. As time went on, I felt the need and the desire to help more people, so I became a volunteer first responder. That was my next step. And as time went on, I became a part of ARIES, helping build disaster uh, recovery and emergency response for like grid down situations. As these things went on in my life, there were a lot of things that happened that you would think would get me into politics. You know, the first thing, starting a small business. That's when a lot of people get involved in politics and they decide that's the time to vote when they start seeing what comes down from Albany on small businesses. For some reason, that, that wasn't it for me. That, that didn't push me to go out and vote. Then when I bought my first home, you would think property taxes in New York would have got me interested in voting when I got that property tax bill or that school tax bill. It didn't. The regulation that I saw as a volunteer first responder and even helping with disaster recovery, you would think those experiences and the red tape that sometimes we had to go through to help people would have pushed me to vote. What ended up happening is I made it all the way through till I was 24 years old before I even registered to vote. I made it through all those life experiences. In Albany, they passed a law. Some of you know about the SAFE Act. You've probably heard of it. Yep, yep, yeah, I see, I see the disgust on people's faces just saying the name. That's what woke me up. See, I grew up hunting in the southern tier. I grew up in Rochester, but my grandfather was a World War II veteran, and he was a farmer. So he had some property down in the southern tier. He taught me a hunt. He taught me about working the land. So when the SAFE Act got passed, that was almost as if somebody took a piece of my family's heritage away from my family. And that's what woke me up to, oh, Second Amendment? And Albany says, no, 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 not Second Amendment, Second Suggestion. That's what got me registered to vote. What I realized from that point on was that there were many more people in this state like me who hadn't registered to vote yet. So I started traveling the state, doing just voter education, saying, hey, I didn't realize how important this was until I lost something. And for each person in the room, you have something that's important to you. Maybe it is property tax. Maybe it's education. Maybe it's Second Amendment rights. Maybe it's something motorcycles rights. Maybe it's something else. It could be health care. Each of us has something that we've seen government in New York fail at or take away. If we haven't, we probably wouldn't be in this room right now. So I went out, I did voter education. That was my next step of giving back. Two years ago, things changed for me. Things changed tremendously. I got married. It was an amazing, amazing thing. We started planning for a family. We were really excited about it. You know what people said time and time again? Is I'd say, hey, we're planning for kids. We were excited. We thought other people would be excited. Instead, they'd have this like scared look on their face. When are you leaving? When are you leaving if you're having kids? Or, you're not going to leave, are you? Are you going to leave New York? And at that point in time, even though I started becoming politically active, I didn't realize how bad New York treats families. I didn't know. So my wife and I, we started looking. You know what we found? We found some terrible things about New York. We found right now today, 39th for our graduation rates in our K-12 system. 39th. Yet we spend $10,000 more per student per year than the national average. We found business environment. We rank 40th. Personal and economic freedoms. 50th. We beat California, and they aren't allowed to have straws. Seriously, that's how bad it is here in New York. You can't have a straw in California. It's still worse here. So what did we start doing? We started looking at other options because we thought, well, we want our kids to do well. We want good economic opportunity. Maybe we should leave. Everybody around us seems to think that's the answer. 
How many of you know that 100,000 New Yorkers leave every year from this state? Yeah. How many of you are thinking of leaving this state? And how many of you know somebody who has already left? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. That was almost us. We started searching around. We landed on South Carolina. That's where we were going to go. I had a bunch of friends who had already gone to South Carolina. We basically had a community starting down there already. Um, we found a school district that was like, wow, this is amazing. We found houses that were a quarter of the taxes that we pay up here. We're like, wow, we actually have some money. We have good education. But we had a criteria that we had to find an airport that had affordable flights back to Rochester. And as we were doing our search, and we kept, and I always came back to that airport. That's what it came back to. You know what we realized? This is home. This is home. It didn't matter where we tried to move to. This was going to be home. And we realized we wanted our kids to grow up with four seasons. My aunt, whose daughter obviously didn't live in, in New York, she moved to Atlanta. She moved to Georgia. She would fly up here to show her daughter my cousin, what the changing of the leaves looked like up here in upstate New York. They'd come up here for the apple festivals, come up here for the grape festivals. And I realized that's what I want for my kids. I want my kids to go to Naples Grape Festival. I want my kids to see the changing of the seasons. I want my kids to have, if they want, the opportunity to hunt in the southern tier, to hike the trails in the Adirondacks. Everything that New York State has to offer as a state and as our location, that's what I want for my kids. But something Larry says all the time, we realize we love this state, we just hate our government. We just hate our government. So when we made that realization, we realized, yeah, this is home. And that's probably the reason you guys haven't left yet. Either that, or you're stuck here held hostage by property taxes. It's usually one of those two things. So we decided to stay. We decided to fight. That's why I'm doing this today. And Larry's story, he's going to tell you, is very similar. We don't want to be one of those 100,000 people that gets pushed out of the state. We don't want to be taxed out of the state. We don't want to be regulated out of the state. No, I want to be here with my family. I want my kids to grow here. But I want them to have good education. I want them to have individual and personal liberties. I want them to have opportunity. I don't want for me to have kids here, put them through the system, and then when they get a college degree, for them to realize they have so much debt and so low opportunity here that they have to leave the state for a job just to pay back their loans. That's not what I want. So that's why I'm here today. Thank you guys all for coming. I'm going to bring up Larry. Larry's going to tell you a little bit about himself too. So thank you. I'm not dressed as good as him. Will you still respect me? <laughs> I don't know. He looks really good. I'm, I'm wearing my name on my chest in case you don't know who I am, just in case. So I have a feeling most of you know who I am. Most of you do. But let me give you something that I think is important, the reason why I'm running. I'm running exactly what, well, the same reason that Andrew said. I don't want to move. It's a selfish reason. I don't want to move. I want to make sure we have in New York that people stay in, in New York that you want to stay in. I met someone when I walked in the door who said he already went to Florida, right? Already left, right? Already went. Yes, this is a problem. It's why I focus on one thing and one thing only. My whole focus is on happy New Yorkers. I focus on happiness. You might say, Larry, it seems kind of weird, focusing on happiness. No, it's not weird at all. If you think about it, our founding documents, life, liberty, pursuit of Happiness. Who talks about that? Nobody but me. No one else does. Why do I care about happiness? Because I'm a business guy. Business guys know this. If you're a business guy, you know this. You're a business. You do lots of things in the business, whatever that is. But they all focus on one thing, happy customers. If you have happy customers, they come back. You've been happy customers, and you've been unhappy customers, right? We all have. If you've been a happy customer, what do you do? You go back. You stay, you tell your friends, you pay the prices because you're happy with the service. You're happy, you stay. 
I want happy New Yorkers. As governor, you are my customers. I want happy customers. Why? Because if you are happy, you stay. If you're happy, you raise your family here. If you're happy, you keep your job here. If you're happy, you retire here. If you're happy, your kids get educated here. If you're happy, you get educated here. And more importantly, when you retire, you retire here. And when you spend your pension, you spend your pension here. That's what I want. I'm not mad at the people who left. I get it. They're unhappy. It's not their fault they left. That's our fault. It's our fault they left. Yes, I said our fault. It's our fault because 60 to 70% of us don't even bother voting anymore. Did you guys know that? 60 to 70% of New Yorkers don't even vote. That means up to 7 or 8 million New Yorkers in any given election don't vote. That's enough to elect anybody. To elect anybody. We're not doing it. For 16 years, the Democrats have run this state. 16 years, a, a Republican has not won a statewide election. In 16 years, whether that's uh, governor, lieutenant governor, AG, doesn't matter. They have not won an election in that long. In that full amount of time, if they were going to fix this, wouldn't they have? If Democrats were going to fix this state, they had 16 years to do it. What about Republicans? Are they innocent? No. They've had 16 years of watching this. I'll ask you a very important question. Where's their plan? Where's their movement? Nowhere. One of the attacks I get all the time. I get it all the time. Larry, where were you five years ago? Where were you eight years ago? Where were you two years ago? Where were you, Larry Sharp, Mr. I have the plan? Where were you? I'll tell you where I was. I wasn't a public servant. My job was to fix my business and fix my family after the crash, and that's what I did. That was my job. My job wasn't public servant. I wasn't a mayor of this, or I wasn't executive of that. I wasn't governor. I wasn't AG. I wasn't any of those things. I was a businessman trying to fix my family and my business after the crash, and I did that. I did my job. The two people running right now, the Democrat and Republican, both of them have been public servants, as they call themselves. They've been government, they've been politicians for over 20 years, both of them. It was their job to protect us. It was their job to fix this state. It was their job, and they failed. They speak of track record all the time. Track record of this, track record of that, track record of this. It's a track record of failure. It's a track record of a million New Yorkers leaving in the last eight years. A million New Yorkers leaving since His Majesty has taken the throne. Over 100,000 every single year, gone. If I was the CEO and I lost 100,000 customers every year, I should be fired. I should be fired, hands down. They talk of track record, but it's a failure. Does that mean failure is bad? No, we've all failed. I failed, you failed, we've all made errors, we've all fall, fallen down, we've all made mistakes, we've all failed. But if you fail, you're supposed to learn from your mistake. You're supposed to learn from your error, figure out something different, something you shouldn't do, a better way of doing it, and you're also supposed to become humbled by your fall. That's what many of us have happened. We've, we've made an error, we learn from it, we become humble. I'm not perfect, I messed up, what can I do to fix it, how can I make it better? Have you seen improvement, change, or humility from either the red team or the blue team? Nothing. 16 years of failure, 16 years of watching failure, and no change. That's where we are now. I'm running because they were so bad. I ran and I started running because they have been failing. Yes, I've been doing this one year. And in one year, I have a plan and a movement, both in one year. Let me ask you, red team, What's your excuse? Nothing. Let me ask you, Democrats, if Cuomo's so bad, what's your excuse? Go ahead, please. We voted, well, Republicans, have okay. voted for Rob Astorino. Yes. And if you look at the demographic, the graphics, upstate New York, we had him. It, how, do you, how do you plan on competing with the downstate Love that. vote? Let me tell you that right now. Because and Astorino, if you cut that bottom section off, he would have been in. Let me, let me go through all that, I'm glad. And by the way, I don't mind you cutting me off. I'm, I, I'm happy having no rules. As you see, I never have notes, I never have rules. I'll touch that right now. Number one, there is a myth, and I will say it's a myth, that New York City takes care of all the voting and because of New York City, it votes everyone else out. It's not actually true. Do your own homework on this. New York City, only 1.5 million people out of New York City vote. There's eight and a half million New Yorkers, that's true. 
One third of the people in New York City aren't born in the country. Another one third aren't born in the city. Most of them can't vote. That's the reality. Most can't vote. 1.5 million is all who voted out of four and a half million. That's only one third. Which means in reality, more people could actually make this happen. But that is propaganda used here, people who are not in New York City, to scare you and to make you think you shouldn't vote. And it works. Because 70% of New Yorkers don't vote, most of those are from up here. In fact, there are some areas where only one in seven vote. Yes, that's propaganda, it's not true. Upstate's fine. Even as far as Westchester, even Dutch is just going upstate. You find more people who can vote. If they do vote, you can make a difference. The problem is we don't vote. That's the issue. Now, I, I liked Rob. I met Rob. Mm -hmm. Actually, he's not a bad guy. So let me touch two parts. You might, you're saying, Larry, how can you win? Because you're asking me, right? It's, it's I got gotcha. you. Yes, how can you win? I'll touch it right now. The two things I get all the time, the big, two biggest attacks I get. Number one is, Larry, I'm a Republican and I can't vote for you because if I vote for you, I'm splitting the vote. Get that often. Okay, be very clear. The Republican can't win. Let's be realistic. He cannot win. There is no split in the vote. If anyone's taking anybody to votes, he's taking mine. I'm not taking his. He is doing nothing but losing ground. I'm doing nothing but gaining ground. There is no way. I don't even see him. He has, most of you, this is true, I would bet, please show my, by, by show of hands, how many of you heard my name before his? Yep, almost the whole room. My name before his, almost the whole room. How many of you heard my name before his and you are a registered Republican? There we go. Registered Republicans heard my name before his. He can't win, never got, Astorino raised more money than him, right? And had more fire in his belly and was a better politician in general. And he couldn't win. You're gonna tell me this guy's gonna win? No way, not gonna happen. So the idea of splitting the vote is, is never gonna happen. And, he's, and you saw the, the articles, he's going broke now. His own party isn't even following him, right? So he has no chance of victory at all. So forget about it, he's done for. So that argument doesn't work. But now the next part, how can I win? All right, I'll ask you, is there anybody in this room who is a registered Democrat? Yep, perfect, thank you. Anybody in this room registered Republican? Great. Anybody in this room registered, but neither of those two, independent some way? Awesome. Anybody in this room who has not voted in the last two election cycles? Yes. A hand went up for every single one of those. That's how I win. Because I'm the only candidate that every single time I do this, and if, if you've watched my Go Lives, you've watched my Facebook Lives, I do this all the time. I ask those four questions, and every single time, hands go up. Every time. And in the most reddest districts, I get blue. In the bluest, I get red. What does that mean? I was in the Bronx and asked this question. The Bronx, very blue. Reg Registered Republicans put their hands in the air. I was, I was up in Watertown, that area. Right? I was in Franklin County, North Country. Right? Franklin County, North Country, very red. And it, uh, Democrats? Yeah, Democrats put their hands in the air. They were in that room. They were in that room. That's how I win this thing, because I can get people who don't vote. I mean, I'm sorry, someone at this table told me, you registered just to vote for me, didn't you? Is that true? Yes. yes. I hadn't heard of you until my daughter uh, told me about you. Just registered. And I just registered ago. I haven't registered in years. Yes, she registered because of me. That happens, yes, yeah, thank you. Yes. That happens at every event. People register just for me. I get, I get notes coming to our page. Carrie, you run our page, right? You see it all the time. Notes that actually say, I'm a registered Republican, I'm voting for you. I'm a registered Democrat, I'm voting for you. I've never voted before. I registered to, I registered to vote for you. Is that true, Carrie? Tons, and growing every day. And growing every day. More and more and more. You asked how I win, that's how I win. That is how I win, because I get a coalition of everybody. I get them all together. The Republican can only get hardcore Republicans and no one else. And Cuomo can only get hardcore Democrats and no one else. That's all they get. But I'll go one step further. When you look at the current world where it is right now, Andrew Cuomo's entire campaign is, I hate Trump. That's the whole campaign. That's the whole campaign. I hate Trump, that's it. He doesn't say how he's gonna fix it, what's gonna go, what he can do better. Does he, he doesn't even acknowledge it's a problem. He doesn't even acknowledge it's a problem except by saying, well, they're leaving because of the weather. Remember that? That's the, that's the furthest he's ever even gone to acknowledging there is a problem. What about the Republican? What's his answer? Cuomo's corrupt. What, well, newsflash? We didn't know that. Oh, is that true? Oh, I'm so shocked. Come on. That's his entire platform. But my platform is? So how do you 
get enough votes to, to I'm, beat him. I'm getting there. Number one is I'm telling people there's an actual plan. There's an actual option. So when they see me and they look me up, they go, oh, that's an actual plan. I'm going to go ahead and vote for him. Number one, how do I do it? If you look right now at the most, the most uh, successful campaigns, they're all grassroots. Nope. I'll go as far back as 2008. Obama was using email when nobody was using email. Remember that? For you guys old enough to remember the Obama. Everyone thought Clinton was going to beat Obama. Remember back in the, in the primaries? Everybody thought Hillary was going to beat Obama. There's no way that Obama could beat Hillary. Remember that back in the primary, 2008, Democratic primary? And he won. He beat her by using what at that point was newest stuff, which was email. Trump, 2016. Trump will never win, never, can't win, ever. He can never win. He won. What was one of his biggest tools? Twitter. What's my tool? Podcast and Facebook. That's my tools. I'm using the same tools that they use, the most, the most advanced tools. How many people here came because they saw my TV commercial on TV? Yeah, nobody. I don't have any. <laughs> don't have any. Yet this room is still filled. Yet I can still get people to show up. How many people saw me in some way, shape, or form on a podcast? Yep, hands go up. What, is, is uh, Cuomo going to go on a podcast? Stop. That's never going to happen. That's how I'm making things happen. Most recent poll we put out last week was the Gravis Marketing Poll. Gravis Marketing Poll had me at 13% with about 33% name recognition. That's low. That's a problem. It's also a good thing. It means if you triple that and I get my name recognition to 100% from 33, you triple 13, which is 39. And that's a win. My problem, how I do it, is name recognition. If I get people to know who I am, that's all it takes. Know who I am, you will look me up, one third of New Yorkers will vote for me. That's how it works. One third, a little bit more than one third, will vote for me. If a little bit more than one third of New Yorkers vote for me, I win. It's a five-way race. In a five-way race, 30% could win, probably like 32, 33% will probably win because other two candidates get very low, two will get very high, boom. So about 30 to 35% will win this thing. That's how I win it. Name recognition. Is that, is that hard? Yes. That's why I don't sleep. It's why I do three or four events every day. It's why I just came from an event, I'm doing another one now, and I'm doing one after this. That's why. It's why I drive the entire state. I will literally have been this week in all 62 counties. Every one of them. I will have been in every single county as of this week. That's how I do it by doing this and keep doing this. And by you helping me out by telling people. You tell your friends, tell your family. How many people here, by the way, brought somebody? There we go. Yes, there we go. That's how we do it. Bringing people, doing this. My last, uh, the last time we did a go live last, uh, last night, we had over 400 people on that. Over 400 people watching it. Plus we had over 100 people in the, in the room. That's how we do it again and again. Each of those equals one more and one more and one more. That's how. Did I answer your question? Awesome. So this is what I'm trying to achieve. This is a winnable race. People say it's not, they're wrong. It's winnable. They didn't see Obama come in 2008, he won. They didn't see Trump 2016, he won. They don't see me coming, the results will be the same. They'll be the same. Is there anyone else you know that has enough passion to get people wanting to bring others to their events? No. Everyone goes, Cuomo's having an event, let's go. No one does that. No one does that. Not even, does he even have events? I don't know if he has, maybe does he have any events. Of course not. There we go. Perfect. Yes, of course. Well, this way, look, all he cares about is his cronies. There we go. Yeah, exactly. Yes. All he cares about is his cronies anyway, so that's why he'll do it. Yes. And that's my entire point. Have you noticed as I travel the state, where are all my events? At a small business. All of them. I talk about supporting small business all the time. So what do I do? I don't just talk the talk, I walk the walk. I didn't ask anybody here to give me one dollar. Please give me money if you want. Please give me money. <laughs> but I'm not asking you to give me anything. I didn't require it. You can just come here and talk to me. All I ask you to do is buy something. Have a nice tea, have a drink, have a cup of coffee, eat something. Support this small business is what I ask you to do. Do that and I'm pretty happy. Do that. Every place I've gone, that's all I've done. And you guys see, when I eat, what do I always eat? Who's paying attention? Where do I eat? Diners, all the time. Local diners every time. And I put up on Facebook, I show people where I'm eating, I talk about the diner, and I promote that small business. I always promote the small businesses. Why? That's how we save New York's economy. It's not through what we always do, which is bribing big business to show up. So we do every time. 
We say, here, big business, why don't you come to this town? We'll give you tens of millions of dollars of bribes. You show up, you're already big business, so you have an advantage. Now I've given you $10 million in bribes, bigger advantage. All the small businesses go out, go out of business because you came and crushed them. Five years later, the bribes go away. You leave, ghost town. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. No more. Support small business, that's the best way. Several reasons why, by the way. Number one, small businesses will become big businesses, right? If we promote them and help them out, they'll become medium-sized businesses, which means you're more resilient. When one business has, does have trouble and falls out, others can easily pop up and connect and help. Not just that, good competition makes for better services for your customers, right? As they fight each other for customers, trying to make happy customers. Also good, but there's something else that is not seen and it's not obvious. Small business hires like this. Big business hires through process. Small business hires like this, which means I'll give somebody a chance. Because I know you, because I trust you, because I know your cousin or your mother or your father, and I will give you a chance that I wouldn't give somebody else. Oh, did you just break that? <laughs> just broke it. He just broke it. It's okay. No, that's the, that's the big, that, that's big business, big brother trying to stop me right there. There it is. So yes, yes. So my point here being, if we have small business, we will give the individual person more of a chance, and that's what I want. But there's something else too on top of that. Small business is almost always opened up by a person from the community, which means they actually care about the community. They care about what happens in the culture of the community, in the environment of the community. They care about that thing because they're born and raised here and or at least live here. When big business comes in, that's not their concern. Not their concern. And if they destroy culture or destroy the environment, oh, Papa, go ahead, please, go ahead. You use your phone for that? Yes. You are hardcore. You are hardcore. That guy's a supporter. I like that. Yes, love that. So that's how we support small business and make us resilient. Go ahead, please. Yes. I want to revamp the education system completely. The current system is broken and we can't keep funding it. And if you listen to any Democrat or any Republican, they will use one of two words all the time. Fund or invest. Right? If you're a Democrat, you almost always use the word fund or fully fund. That's the phrase you'll use. If you are a Republican, you use the word invest. What does that mean? Your tax dollars, more of them going into a broken system. I don't even care about charter schools or even big business being involved. I'm gonna change it completely. Number one, this will be a little bit, some of you have heard this before, please bear with me if you've heard this before. All right, number one, I wanna end all testing, all standardized testing until you're in high school. What does that mean? That means no standardized testing until high school. Why? It's an unfair way of grading teachers, it's an unfair way of rewarding schools, it only makes kids who are 10, 11, and 12 years old feel stupid if they can't take tests well, creates a secondary class of, of students for absolutely no reason. Bad idea, no standardized testing until high school. Because here's the worst part, it's no indication of success at that age, right? In high school, it, it helps. High school standardized testing can help you figure out where you're going, absolutely it can. But before that, it is just hurtful and just unfair and should go away. If that goes away, two things will happen. Number one, we'll lose Common Core. So what? We'll lose Common Core, it's probably going away anyway. It's bad, let it go. Yes, it will go away, let it go away, I don't care. It's fine. We'll also though, we'll lose federal funding. We will lose about $4 billion in federal funding. The budget, the budget of, of education is about $60 billion. We will lose about $4 billion. I'll keep that number in mind for a moment. I'm going to take care of that in a second. But $4 billion we'll lose. Here's what else also we lose. When we lose federal funding, we also lose federal strings. When we lose federal strings, guess, guess what else we can lose now? Administrators, lots of them. Those who are writing grants, those who are checking boxes, those who are, are, are following rules, we can lose tons of them. And I'm happy about that for several reasons. I'm the only guy who actually says, let teachers teach, then I don't add administrators. I actually let them teach. I pull them away. We have school districts now that have more administrators than teachers. Yep. You all right? Yeah. You see, that's what happens when you go to Florida. <laughs> Should have stayed in New York. Me up. That's it. I shook you up. There we go. Exactly. So... So here's what I, what, what I want to do is I want to make sure that we have less administrators. The average teacher makes about $80,000 a year. The average administrator makes over one hundred fifty. dollars So some make two dollars or $300,000, by the way. 
So if I all of a sudden get rid of two administrators, which I won't, by the way, the districts will decide which ones, because there are absolutely important and valuable administrators and competent administrators who should stay. But I don't know which ones those are. The district will decide. They will pick the ones that are valuable and matter, and they can make that happen. Go ahead. Yeah, the, the turnover rate around the burnout for teachers right now is embarrassingly bad. It's horribly bad right now. You're correct. And, and we'll also fix that. And we'll fix, most teachers who leave, if you ask them why they left, they will tell you the same thing. Bureaucracy. Administrators. Bureaucracy. And anybody in the education field? Ah, is that true or no? Yes. Yes, there we go. You hear it often. Most common thing. That's why they leave. So I'm going to end that because I actually want to let teachers teach. But I'm still not done. I'm still not done. K through 12 should be K through 10. The last two years of high school, and most of you know this already, is gym, study hall, video games, and smoking weed. A good time. It is. It is a good time for many kids. It is. But the problem is it also means that kids are lost in those two, last two years, which creates problems and trouble for kids in those two years because they're lost because they're playing around doing dumb things when they should be doing something that's, that makes more sense. How do we know this to be true? Because now they go off to college, and the first year of college is 13th grade because they're not ready for college. And now it takes six years to graduate from, from school, average, to six years now to graduate from college. So I got a 24-year-old kid who's never had a job, and we go, I wonder why he has no work ethic. Or worse, we have a 24-year-old kid who has $100,000 in debt, a degree that has no value in this state, and so what are they doing? They're working at Starbucks. Instead, they could be going to BOCES, you're saying. And I love the idea of BOCES, but you all know this too. You and I discussed this just today. The image of BOCES is horrible in our system, and that's embarrassing. It's a shame on us. You want to go to BOCES? People say this. I've heard this saying more than once. You can't go to BOCES. You're better than BOCES. Any of you heard that before? No. Yes, you heard that before. Yes, I've heard that more than once. People actually say that. That's horrible. They say things like, oh, no, the dumb kids go to BOCES, or the bad kids go to BOCES. But here's the harsh part. The kid who goes to BOCES, he's 24 years old. He's a plumber. He makes at least 80 grand a year and has no debt. I want to be the bad kid. Right? I want to be the bad kid then. We should not be thinking that way at all and shame on us for thinking that way. This state needs trades like there's no tomorrow. The average tradesman in, in New York State is over 50. That's terrible. Not that I don't want people who are over 50 with trades. Uh, I'm 50. I love my 50-year-old. I do. Should not be the average. The average should be 30, 35. That's, the 50 year old shouldn't be hustling doing the work. They should be training the youngsters to do that work because they've got 20 years of experience, 30 years of experience. They should be passing that on to the youth. The problem is there's no replacements coming. Thank you. There's no one to do that. Exactly right. And we're sitting here saying, don't go to trade school? What is wrong with us? Horrible idea. I want to reship the entire thing. At K through 10, at 10th grade, you pass a test. If you pass that test, you have a high school diploma. You're done. You're done. But guess what? Five choices at 16. Choice number one, if you think college is right for you, you should go. The problem is we've been told a lie, and the lie is the only way to have success is to get that awesome New York State Regents degree and then go off and get a college degree and have a great job. That's the only way. That's a lie. That is a way to success, not the only way. And by the way, the, the New York State High School Regents Diploma is a complete and total waste of time. It is utterly useless. And I know it makes some of you angry. It is useless. In fact, it is harmful. People bust their rump trying to get this. We literally have a rash of kids' suicides in, in New York State because of the pressure it is to pass these tests. Now, what happens when you get a Regents diploma in New York State? Nothing. Nobody cares. And I mean nobody cares. I hire and fire. What do you for a living, right? I'm not a government guy. I'm a business guy. This has never happened. Never. Oh my God, your resume says Regents degree. You are hired. <laughs> Never happened ever. Nobody cares. And we waste our time and energy in this state having a, what's it, they have like a super duper Regents degree now, right? Or something like that? Advanced, Advanced Regents degree. Another work waste of time. This is a well, waste of time. They, they said everyone has to have a Regents now, but then they made the, the passing score lower. Yeah, because so that works. They, they really, so it's all a bunch of junk. That's correct. It's junk science. 
as I said, means nothing useless. Get rid of it, I don't care, nobody cares. It creates pressure for no reason. It's a pressure on teachers for no reason. Pressure on kids for no reason. Why? It will not help you at all. I know I hire and fire. Nobody cares about your Regents Diploma at all. Next, I decide if I want you to actually, if you want to go to college, you decide that's right for you. Take those next two years, 11th and 12th grade, and go to a prep school. Go to a prep school that will get you ready for college, whether that's biology, history, English, whatever it is, go to a prep school that'll make sure you're ready for college so when you get there, you can rock and roll. You can take advantage of internships, advantage of incubators, and you can really do well, maybe even graduate in three years. Amazing, please, good for you. You don't want that, no worries. You're that super smart kid, that kid that can you know, pass any test, you're so book smart, insane, you're that genius kid who's bored in high school because it's, you're so smart, awesome. Take your SAT, get an associate's degree, go now. What, you're gonna be a scientist anyway. Start right away, go. You don't want those two. Great, go to trade school. Become a plumber, become a, a mechanic, become a, an HVAC guy or gal. Do what you wanna do, I'm happy with that, go do that. So now two years, depending upon what you do, you either have an actual license or you're ready for an apprenticeship. Just go. Fourth, get a job. Literally go get a job. I worked at 16, why can't you? We can't work at 16. Not what is going to happen? Someone's going to die? No, it doesn't happen. This isn't the 1800s. I'm not going to get caught in a loom. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Go work. Learn a work ethic now at 16, right? Learn that how it is to have a boss. Learn that when your boss says come in at 8, it doesn't mean 9.30. It means 7.45. You know any people I've heard, it is all the time, Larry, I will hire anybody with a work ethic. I'm sure you've heard that more than once. I will hire anybody. There's guys who told me these words, why I remember the eight o'clock thing. A guy told me, he said, Larry, I tell him to come at eight o'clock. I open a door. If they're there, they're hired. So he told me. He said that's how much trouble he has with work ethic. That if he opens the door at eight and the guy or gal is there, they just pass the interview. Because they actually showed up. They can't get people to even show up on time. Learn that at 16. Last option, go start a, go start a business. Go, get a license, start a business, go. I don't mind, go do it. Why do I say that? I get two complaints all the time. Larry, they're 16 years old. Yeah, they are, good. Make your errors at 16, not at 26. Do it now, and there are other countries who are doing it already. Europe, Europe has a style like this in many other countries where they start them going off at 16, making decisions and trying to figure out what their next steps are. Let's do that. We have actually a group of people in their 20s right now in America that if you ask the average you know, kids in their, 20s, in their 20s do they feel like an adult, over half will say no. Over half will say no. There's a thing now called adulting. Yes, and you heard of that, it's called adulting, right? It's 20-somethings who don't know how to be an adult and act like they're pretending to be adults. Yes, that's what it's called, adulting. Yes. That's correct. I can't, yes, it's correct. Yes, and if we have schools like this, that'll cover those things. Because here's what I promise you, we gotta pay for it. We have to pay for this thing. How do we pay for it? Let me tell you how you pay for it. New York State Constitution says we have to pay for all education grades 1 through 12. Got to pay for it. Okay, I'll pay for it. No worries. I was a Marine. When I got out of the Marine Corps, I had the GI Bill. The GI Bill gave me X dollars and Y number of years to use those dollars. We're doing that. They get $20,000, sit in the state, we'll pay any school, wherever they want to go. They have $20,000 and seven years to use it. Good luck. Here's what I promise will happen. I promise this. A bunch of prep schools will pop up. Guess how much they'll cost for two years? Yes, they will. $20,000. Of course they will. A bunch of trade schools will pop up. Guess how much they'll cost for, for two years? Yes, they will. How do I know they'll pop up? Because banks will give loans for that. Why? Guaranteed government money. Banks love guaranteed government money. So they will absolutely give loans to be able to build those schools and they'll build the schools to where, to where kids and parents will want to go, which means they'll have those classes in those schools. Because to make all this happen, the Board of Regents has to go away, and it will. The Board of Regents has to go away. It is nothing but a pain. It can only be one thing only, and that is a repository for information. It should have absolutely no power over schools whatsoever. None. Now, what I just said is $20,000. That means for each kid, we're paying 10,000 bucks per kid per year. Right now, we're spending $22,000 per kid per year. We save $12,000 per kid per year. There are about 400,000 11th to 12th graders in New York State. That's over $4 billion, isn't it? That's more than our federal funds, isn't it? So we can lose all our federal funds, make up all the money, plus a surplus, plus lose administrators. So we can have better service, 
happier kids, happier parents, happier teachers without raising one tax dollar, and more importantly, with putting a surplus to each area. Now on top of that, I'm gonna go even further. I'm gonna go even further. And that is, how do I pay for the entire thing? I don't wanna have school tax. I think local school tax is a bad idea. Local school tax just punishes people. Not just that, I also don't wanna have a tax, that, um, a way of paying which, which says, let me put some formula, some algorithm together to decide what school gets what based upon test scores. No. Nope. The, the Constitution says, our state Constitution says, the state has to pay. The state should pay. Should be a flat fee to each school district. A flat fee. X number of students times X dollars. Here's your check. Good luck. No more grant writing. No more begging the feds for money. No more begging the state for money. No more, oh, my buddy, my friend. Ah, you're, you have a construction company? Hmm. And you build football fields? Hmm. Why don't you write a grant for your school district because I think you need a football field. And here's $10 million that you'll give to her. That happens all the time. Not just that, what happens in the school district when you don't use all your money? You can lose it. How dumb is that? Who thought that was a good idea? How about instead, here's your money, and if you don't use it, you could save it. Huh, isn't that crazy? You could actually save your money in your school district for when you actually need a football field, and you could actually build one when you have it. But not just that, you know how much money is coming in every year, therefore a bank would even want to do a loan if you had to. You'd be able to finance things if you wanted to as a school district. You could do it if you wanted to. Not saying you should, but you could. Not just that, you could choose. You could choose how you spend your money. Yeah. My only rule is transparency. So if you would like to create different types of schools, go ahead. If you think you need to hire more teachers, go ahead. Should you give them raises? Go ahead. You're part of a union. Let your union join in and, and deal with the school districts and figure out what's the best, best, what's the best deal for you guys. I'm okay with that. My goal is to keep my hands off. I say I want to let teachers teach, and I want localized school districts to do what they can with their, own with their own teachers, with their own students. But Larry, there'll be failure. We're failing in mass now. Are you kidding me? But here's the funniest part. If I gave you all that freedom, most school districts would change absolutely nothing. Out of fear. They will. They'll change absolutely nothing. But there'll be a couple early adopters who will say, we're in trouble. Probably in Rochester, because Rochester is really broken. Am I right? Oh, yeah. Rochester is broken. So probably in Rochester, they're gonna be like, you know what, let's try something new, let's try something different. Let's give, something, give it a new, new, new feel. Do it, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, we all learn, because my rule is transparency. That's what I want, it's transparency. I was at a radio show once, and someone called in, and they said, Larry, we have a problem. And I said, what's the problem? She said, I deal with all the new kids coming in, the four-year-old and five-year-olds coming in. She said, and they know nothing. Did you remember that? Yeah. Yes. So, they know nothing. She said, they know nothing at all. I said, what do you mean? They don't know the colors, they don't know their, their, their words, nothing. And she said, well, I, I said, what should we, we do? And she said, I think we should pay the parents. I said, what? She goes, we should pay the parents. 50 to 100 bucks to a parent if when a kid comes in, a kid knows all this stuff and passed the test, this will encourage parents to teach their kids. And I thought to myself, ah, what a terrible idea. That's what I thought, what a terrible idea. But you know what I told her? Okay. If I'm governor and your district decides the right answer, do it. Why did I say that? Because I don't just talk the talk, I walk the walk. I trust the teachers to know better. That teacher deals with her people, that teacher deals with those parents and those kids. She deals with them, I don't. If she thinks it's the right answer, and if her district says yes, we will take a part of our money and pay parents, and they think it's the right answer, try it. Because one of two things is true. One, I'm right and it's a bad idea. In which case, with transparency, everyone knows and says, don't do that because if she's thinking it, someone else is too, right? She will then show the rest of the state, bad idea. Or maybe I'm wrong, and it's the best idea ever, and all the kids get better grades and are happy, and it's amazing. Maybe I'm wrong. Good, I'll be wrong. We'll name the plan after her, and everyone else can now, whatever, Jane, whatever, I made her name, Jane. We'll, we'll call it the Jane plan, and everyone else can copy if they want to. I'm okay, and I meant that. I said that, that's on record, and I would do it. I'm the only one who's saying, let teachers teach. And that was a very long-winded answer. I know it was. But education is a serious thing I'm concerned about. It does many things good. The last piece it does is that 11th and 12th grade. If you are an 11th and 12th grade teacher, I want you to imagine something. Imagine a classroom where everybody in that classroom wants to be there. So imagine that. Every kid chose to be there. No more discipline problems. No more fighting. Everyone wants to be there, right? No more pressure on that. Imagine as a student, 
Everyone in that classroom wants to be there. Changed everything. And I moved this right in, even to one thing that may even sound crazier, and that's school violence. School violence. People always do something which I never do, which is they put school violence along with guns. I don't. Guns are not killing our children. What's killing our children are three things. Lack of purpose. Are you leaving? You coming back? Yeah, I'm coming back. Awesome. Okay, good. No, no, go. All good. All good. Just making sure you get, yeah. Plus, you got mad running to Florida. Just making sure. Just making sure you're coming back. All right, yes. So, lack of community, lack of purpose, and loneliness. That's what's killing our children. Everyone in these massive attacks that have happened, while they're violent, in the, at the bottom, at the core, they're all public suicides. These are kids who want to kill themselves and kill others. These are unhappy kids. One of the reasons is they're unhappy in school. The last two years, guy comes to me, he says, Larry, I like your idea. He goes, well, you know what My kid, he's not wasting time. He's super smart. This is his words. He goes, my kid's very smart, super smart, super smart, book smart, super smart. I said, awesome, that's great. Do you remember what happens to super, ki super smart kids when they go to high school? They get bullied. They get bullied. You got people who are bullying because they're unhappy. You got people who don't want to be in school because they're unhappy. You got kids who are trying to do school who are getting bullied. But with this plan, 16, 17, the super smart kid is in the prep school with other super smart kids. The super smart kid is with an associate's degree with other super smart kids. The kid who's angry at being in school is not angry to be in school. He's in a trade school because he didn't want to be in school. He's in a trade school learning how to fix tractors, learning how to do HVAC. So he's busy with his hands too. Everybody's happier. We create community. You can't go off and shoot somebody when you've got a tractor to fix. You don't want to go and shoot somebody. The teacher wants us to help build a rocket ship. You've got stuff to do. You've got purpose. You've got community. You're happy. I said I care about happy New Yorkers. Every single plan I come up with is on making happy New Yorkers. In this case, happier teachers happier students, happier parents. We have a happier New York, we have a better New York. All right, I was very long-winded, but did I answer your question? Yeah. Awesome, any other questions? I'm sorry, I'm sorry again? Oh, not the charter schools. No, but I don't care about charter schools, my point. We don't require charter schools with this. It's not required. It, the, the whole problem goes away, right? That's why I brought it up. Does that make sense? Good, go ahead. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Again, yeah, 100%. Look, here's the reality. When the trade schools pop up and when that begins to happen, this won't happen tomorrow. It'll be several months before it can happen anyway. So we'll find answers. Either trade schools will have busing services, which is fine. That works totally perfectly. Or we'll let kids get licenses at 16. I'm happy with a lot of kids have licenses at 16, right? What's wrong with that? They can. Yeah. With a permit, they can only get their license at 17. Yeah, so we can make a shift. I don't, it's a, that's an issue that we can easily fix. Absolutely. But yes, either there'll, be, either there'll be transportation, right? Maybe there'll be buses for 11th grade and not for 12th. Or whatever. And each school district will find their own answer. It's an easy fix, right? We, already ha we have some crazy school bus routes now already. You've seen them. Insane. We'll easily find an answer and it'll be a whole lot more efficient. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Someone else on this side had something? Go ahead. Yes. What would you do about federal funding for lunches? Federal, that's part of the four billion. So that would that would already that would part of the four billion. Right. So, so we we're not getting that, only feeding everybody. The state would pay. As the state should pay. Yes, absolutely. The problem every time we add get federal money, we get federal strings. I don't want federal strings. Yes. So again, note the four billion we lost, we brought back with extra. The money's still there. So the school district can still pay for all the school lunches they want to pay for. It's still there. It doesn't change anything. Say again? It's just coming from a different source. Different source. Exactly right. It's coming from the state Hopefully instead. the food would be better. <laughs> because there'll be no strings. Yes, I guarantee you it'll be better. And if we do it right, it'll be even better. In many areas, it'll be farm to school. It'll be farm to school in the best case. And that'll now be okay. Why? No more border regions getting in the way. We can do farm to school, right? In fact, there are already districts that I'm talking about already where they, want to, they actually want to build a, a farm at the high school. So you want to build a farm at the high school? It's your budget. Build a farm at the high school. Have the kids make their own food if they want to. Now again, I'm the governor. I'm not going to tell you how to make that happen. You will. But I don't, it doesn't mean I let you go. It means I watch you. Right? I don't want to be your father. 
right? The Republicans will be your father. They want to make sure they have protection from everything. I'm going to be your mother. Democrats will be your mother. I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to be your brother. That's it. I'm your brother. I'm the guy who you love, but you don't want to live with. I got it. <laughs> but when you need a ride to the airport, I'm there for you. That's who I want to be. I want to be the, go- the governor who says, I will protect your rights against the local bullies. I don't want to be the guy who I am the bully and everyone enforces the king's will. So what happens in your district if all of a sudden people say, I don't want to feed the kids. I don't care, right? I will shine a light on that and I will step in, of course. But if you're feeding your kids, why do I care? If you want to go farm to school or you think there's a better way of doing it, please try it. Absolutely. 100% yes. Here's what I know. I'm sure of this because it works in life. It works in business. It's a very simple equation. Personal freedom plus accountability plus transparency equals innovation. That's how it works every time. I will make sure you are transparent and accountable. Good luck. You will absolutely show me magic. How do I know that for sure? Have any of you watched my social media? Almost all of you. Are any of you impressed by my social media? Yes, a lot of you are. Excellent. Do you know how I run that? I don't know. Literally, I don't know. I literally don't know. What do I do? I give my team freedom, but it's transparent, and they're accountable. And what do I get? Innovation and a filled room from social media. That's how I do it. I practice what I preach. Everything I say, I practice what I preach. That's how you run things well. That's how all the new businesses that are running. People ask me all the time, Larry, you libertarians, can you run anything? We run every large successful business in this country. Everyone's a libertarian. Everyone. Because they all follow that same exact formula. That's how they run it. Every single time. Did I answer your question at least? Yes. Awesome. Go ahead, please. Okay. I, I, I want to go back. Please go back anywhere you want. The economy. Let's do it. Now, you were talking about small business. Yes, indeed. What is your plan to keep large businesses? Yes, great question. In Rochester, yep. we had Kodak years ago. Yep. And that fed thousands of machine shops. Yes. Small businesses. 100%. Everybody. Yes. Know, and they drive, uh, drive yes. up. And, I got you. you know, Two things out. Rochester is kind of. Yep. A skeleton of what it was. Let me cover several pieces here. Number one, you heard a couple plans that I mentioned already. And some of you may or may not like every part of my plan. You might not, and I get it. If my plan you think that I'm talking about is not perfect and there are problems in it, I'm happy for you to tell me how to fix it. I'm in. Again, I'll add your name to it, and you can have the name of the plan. But I'm, I have a plan. Let me quickly give you the Democrat plan for both the economy and also education. Finished. Let me give the Republican plan for both. Finished. There is no plan. Why do I say that? Because I want you to realize something. When you measure my plans, if you measure them against perfection, I will lose every single time. I'm not perfect, neither are you, no one is. If you measure my plan and set against what's actually happening, which is status quo, while my plans are good. But not just that. I don't expect you to agree with me on everything I talk about. You're never going to. Don't expect it at all. I'm hoping I get 80%. I use the 80-20 rule. You guys are in business, know the 80-20 rule, right? But also something else. My first commander-in-chief was Ronald Reagan, and Ronald Reagan always said, if you agree with someone 80% of the time, then you're a political ally, not your enemy. So I follow that. If we agree 80%, you are my ally, you should consider voting for me. If not, you should either stay home, vote for someone else. Either one is, is the appropriate answer. But if I get you 80%, you should, think about, you should think about voting for me. Just keep that in mind. My plan for big business. His plan for, for big business. Nothing. Big business is wonderful but I'm not gonna bribe them to come here. Bribing them to come here is what has destroyed us. Relying on one big thing is what crushes so many small towns. No, my goal is to make an environment where people want to stay in a big business that's here, wants to grow further. And the environment becomes so good, they want to come. And there are several ways of doing that. Let me give you a couple of ideas. Number one, this is my big idea. Give you a big idea and a couple of small ones. The big idea, ending the state income tax in four years. That is a massive task. Now that can be done. It will take at least four years to do. The state income tax is about $50 billion of income every single year. It's a lot. But even if I come close to getting rid of it, it will make people want to stay. They think, wait a minute, income tax is going away? Let me think about staying. That's step one. That will take four years. Shorter term, supporting all the new industries, supporting Bitcoin, blockchain, supporting hemp and cannabis, supporting the vaping industry, Uber, Airbnb. New York State goes out of, it, out of its way to hit all the new stuff with a stick. Get away, get away, get away. I'm going to bring them all back. 
we start bringing those back, it'll become very positive to show up. You will see more industry come back to our state. But not just that. I want to make sure I'm supporting both small businesses and, more importantly for Upstate, small farmers. Right now, small farmers are getting crushed. And you also may not know this, there's literally an epidemic of small farmers committing suicide. Seven generations, oh, you know, yes, you know, seven generations and all of a sudden that farm goes away. Uh, debt, debt, debt to where they can't even sell their farm. And they, they get foreclosed, they commit suicide. That has to end. How do we do that? A couple things. As I mentioned, supporting the new businesses like uh, blockchain, open source uh, technologies. What does that mean? Getting rid of the bit license. The bit license does nothing but stop technology companies from coming here. If we have to, we also re, we have to renegotiate um, all of our energy because some of the energy problems we have, particularly in North Country, make it tougher for them to come up. We renegotiate. I don't care. We renegotiate. I want those here because that not only brings larger businesses here, it brings the youth back. And I want the youth here. The young do not stay here because no opportunities. But bring back those cool new things, they will show up. On top of that, if you are a small business, you are a small farmer, or if you are um, a small business in general, there's a law right now in Wyoming that says if you sell only locally within Wyoming, you are immune from all federal re regulatory bodies. We should add that here in New York State. That will not help uh, internet companies, right? But they already don't pay tax anyway, so it's fine. It won't help them. But it will help the average guy or gal who works in a small business here. They will not have to worry about any federal regulatory bodies. But also a farm, which means if you, if you purposely sell local, guess what? You're, you're going to have a bigger advantage. It will encourage you to sell locally. Still not done. Why don't we have small businesses being treated like small businesses? So, I'm sorry, small, small farms being treated like small businesses. Small farms should be treated just like small businesses, meaning lower, lower insurance rates and lower workers' comp rates. will help them tremendously. And lastly, they can now get small business loans. If a farm can get a small business loan and it's a dairy farmer or it's a, a, a new hemp or cannabis farmer, whatever the case may be, now we can make craft uh, products. If you're a dairy farmer right now, anybody here in the dairy farming world? Ah, oh, there we go, you're a dairy farmer. You are a price taker and not a price maker. You have to hope that the Chinese love cheese this season and so you can get higher prices on your milk. That is not a viable business model. How about instead, we allow you to be treated like a small business, which means, again, lower workers' comp, lower insurance, and small business loans. So now you're a small dairy farmer, great. Craft cheese, craft ice cream, Right, craft yogurt, how do I know that will work? It's working with the beer industry now. The beer industry right now is craft everything and growing. You find a lot of investment coming in. Tons of investment comes in, not your taxpayer dollars. But investors go, you mean if I give you half a million dollars, you can build this thing out? Yep, done, boom. You have a new partner, a bunch of cash, craft, 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 rocking and rolling. Now here's the best part. You wouldn't have to worry about any federal regulatory bodies as long as you started small and just sold locally. Once you got your business up and running, you can make it bigger and then sell out of the state and become a big business. We will support that too. But more importantly, can you imagine if you had Kraft yogurt and you had uh, Kraft ice cream? You got three or four kids. One of your kids wants to work the farm. The other two don't. But guess what? They don't have to work the farm. They can work the business. You can keep your family together. You can keep your family on your farm. One kid works the farm. One kid works marketing. One kid works operations. Life is good. You can hire people locally who you know to do parts to help out with your local farm and make it a business. People will come back. Still not done. I want hemp and cannabis to be regulated like onions. Yes, like onions. What does that mean? As long as you're 18 years or older, one exception, to buy it, let it be regulated like that. Why? Now a farmer can decide if they want to use hemp or cannabis. Again, hemp products, hemp crete, hemp plastic, hemp rope, hemp cloth. Again, more great products that can pump out and we can make people who are happy to purchase whatever they want to purchase and locally. And it's good for the uh, environment on top of it. Cannabis products, those for sleep, those for uh, a pain medication. This will help our people who have chronic pain. It'll help with our addiction problem. Nothing but good and local and it'll help a farmer out on top of it. If we heavily regulate this, I can guarantee you what will happen. Big business wins, small business loses. That's what we've learned from Colorado, Washington, and California. No, I want the little guy to win. I want small business to explode. How do I know it's working? Look at the coffee shops. Look at the brewery industry here in New York State. It's beginning to explode, small business. There are towns that that's all you see is those two. That's all you see, that and chains, right? That and chains. I want to stop that. I want a bunch of new local ideas popping up all over the place. Not just that. I want to make sure we get rid of scaffolding law. The scaffolding law punishes construction. That's got to go away. On top of that, we have to make sure that when it comes to workers' comp, 
We don't have two, uh, two parts of workers' comp. We have workers' comp you have to pay for for on the job and off the job. That's insane. If your boss tells you to do something and you get injured, that's the boss's fault. Absolutely, workers' comp. I'm with you. But if you do something dumb, that's on you. Don't do dumb things. Don't blame your boss for that. Should not happen. It should be an option for people to choose if they want to. We do that, we'll see businesses will be much better off. Lastly, end and get rid of the insurance board. We have an insurance board in New York State. That insurance board is basically predatory. It is literally hunting small businesses to extinction. If you have a small business, you've seen it happen to you already. We do that, we will grow small business. We'll make an environment where big business wants to come back. We change our education system, I'm almost done, change our education system, now our 16, 17 year olds will be ready to rock and roll right away. One of the reasons why big business doesn't come here, two big reasons, number one, High taxation. Number two, lack of talent. Two reasons why they don't come back. And you ask them ever, we've done these things, same thing. Lack of talent, high taxation. I'm telling you how to make our taxation lower and how to make our talent better. Both of those two things. Because when big business comes here, what do they often do? They bring all their people from other states here with us. I don't want that. I want our people being, being hired. I want our people having jobs. I want our businesses supporting them. And I was long-winded again. Did I answer your question at least? Partially. Oh, what part I, didn't I? I got, what part didn't I, I answer? The Albany seems to be running, teetering on uh, the red uh, year after year. What do you mean teetering on red? We're, we're four, we have a $4 billion deficit and a $300 billion debt. Right. That's not teetering on red. Okay. That's in the red. They're in the red. Yeah, it's okay. in the red. It's in the red, yes. What is your plan for... Uh, bringing us back to in the black. I love that. Yes, I'm glad you asked so many questions. It's awesome. But here's, guess what you've noticed? I actually have a plan for these things. Ask someone else. They'll say, fund, invest, fund, invest. They won't give you an actual plan. Here's my plan. We have to raise money through ways other than taxation. Number one, some of you heard me talk about this. I'll give you a couple of them. Number one, why in the world do we have a Mario Cuomo bridge? Boo, boo. Yeah, exactly. No. Why isn't that a Verizon bridge or a Google bridge or an Apple bridge? Why isn't it why that? Didn't they keep the bridge? Because I don't make any money on Tappan Zee Bridge. I can make money on Google Bridge. I can make money on Apple Bridge. Why? They will easily drop $100 million to have that bridge, to have the, the naming rights on that bridge every year. How do I know that? They drop $20 million on a stadium that's used on their weekends every single year. I'm giving them naming rights on a bridge that is literally being mentioned hundreds of times every single day during rush hour in a 16 million person metro area and hundreds of thousands of cars going by it every single day. Yes, they will pay. And we think about that downstate, dozen bridges and tunnels if not more. We could raise billions of dollars just on that, but I'm not done. Not only do we raise money on that, but guess what? They will control the maintenance. We still own the bridges, so we still inspect the bridges, right? We still inspect them. If they don't fix it, they lose the contract. So they fix the bridge to our specifications. That's part of the deal. When they do that, guess what? We have safer bridges. We have bridges now that collapse in New York State. Now, with this, we actually have safer bridges. They have to fix it. Life is good. But guess what else? We're not paying for that. That is now cost that we're not paying anymore. Now Apple or Google or Sprint is paying that cost. I've just lowered our, our spending while raising money without raising one taxpayer dollar. And that's just one idea. I'm not even done. The MTA right now, downstate, the MTA has rail lines that go into the city every single day. At night, they're not used. No passengers. Why aren't they freight lines? Now we have freight lines coming into New York City every single night, lowering truck, truck traffic into the city, right? Cheaper, and they're paying for it. They pay to travel it in. They pay for the hubs. They pay for the maintenance. Lowers maintenance on the trains, and they give us money. Add all together, guess what else we can do? End tolls. Why do we have tolls? Give rid of tolls. They're paying for it. No tolls, tolls go away. The average New York gets a break, no extra taxes, I've just raised money again and lowered spending. I'm still not done. How about the Erie Canal? Erie Canal is a disaster. It costs us over $100 million every single year to, uh, to maintain, including capital projects. We make less than $5 million. Erie Canal is over 520 some odd miles long, give or take three dozen locks. Why aren't we naming all the locks? Name every single lock, make them a tourist trap, I mean tourist site. Make each one of them a, a tourist trap, a tourist site, right? Each one. We could repair the entire Erie Canal without one taxpayer dollar. Raising money to fix it, make it viable again, so we can make some money off of it without any taxpayer money, and raise money on that too. This is billions of dollars just in these ideas. I'm still not done. How are we going to fix I-81 here all the time? How are you going to fund I-81? I'm not funding I-81. You know what I'm going to do? Google Road or Magnetic Road or whatever the cool thing is. 
They put that road right next to it, or, or in between the two lines, or right next to it. They put that down, and you keep that road, and your leasing expenditures for that road is maintenance on the other two. Keep the maintenance on that road, you get to keep your Google road. So now we have a choice. You want to jump on the cool Google road? Jump on it. Probably going to be driverless buses or something like that, whatever. You like that? Jump on it. Maybe it'll be, maybe it'll be a, a freight or some travel to move uh, equipment or supplies. I'm not concerned, whatever it is. Or drive on the regular interstate. Either one. Again, more options, no pack taxpayer money, and we're no longer paying for maintenance on that road. Am I making sense to you or no? You don't believe it. Okay, no. It's fine. It's fine. You don't believe it. Yeah, I, I yes. I think it's a lot, you know, your term's what, four years? Yeah, well, hopefully eight. I'm hoping oh, eight. All right. Hoping eight, eight. yes. Eight. Yes, absolutely, okay. yes. So, so we can do that. But to be clear, if you don't like my idea, no problem. There's an alternative if you want. You know what the alternative is? Nothing. Nothing. Right. That's your alternative. Nothing. So if you don't like my idea, I get it. Go to your alternative. Vote red or vote blue. You'll get nothing. You'll get more debt. You'll get more, more deficit. You'll get... Cheaper than Uber. Of course they do. So we changed that. $12, $36. Liar, it's a lot of money. I know, and it's good. It should be a lot of money for an emergency room. 36 bucks is fine. That's still less than most people would pay who have insurance. It's fine. You can do it. It doesn't affect Medicare, it affects Medicaid. It's fine. You're getting a check. You can do 36 bucks. The world's not going to end for you. Here's what happens. Those people not pay 36 bucks, many of them won't use the ambulances anymore because it's too expensive. But some still will, because it's habit. And guess what? I hear it all the time. Larry doesn't matter because we don't chase them anyway. We let them go. We let them go because it's three bucks. Okay. If it was 36 bucks, they do it four, five, six times. Now all of a sudden that's 100, 200, 300, 400 bucks. That becomes sellable to a debt collector. Now obviously we have massive debt that happens all the time at the county level. And if you guys who know, who know this, you have maybe hundreds, if not millions of dollars in what should be collected that isn't collected. And who pays for that? You do. How about instead we sell that debt off to a debt collector and collect at least 30 cents on a dollar. Now we got some money back. Now we got some money back at least. Debt collector takes care of it. When that begins to happen and they start getting phone calls, getting, getting uh, collected, guess what happens? They stop. Now that does not take six months. That takes a year. Because the culture begins to change and block to where these people stop taking advantage of the system. You keep doing that in any different little area, the system will change, the culture will change, they will stop. This to your point. It will not be one minute. That will take a year, maybe more. But it can't be done. The alternative is keep funding fraud. Keep funding it. Because what will you keep hearing? We have to keep funding and investing. Or you people say this. It's about fraud, waste, and abuse. To be clear, when someone says fraud, waste, and abuse without a specific plan like I just gave you, what they mean is nothing. When has stopping fraud, waste, and abuse ever worked in your lifetime? Yeah, never. Doesn't. We do this and work on our pension bomb, we can actually make it happen. Guys, I'm running short on time. I know you didn't agree with everything I said. I hope at least answered your question, at least answer it. Awesome, I'm gonna make sure, because I know sometimes we don't like what I have to say, but I never wanna dodge a question. I'll make sure I did actually answer the question. I'm gonna leave you with a couple things if I could. Number one, if you like what you heard at all, think it was a good idea at all, you need to vote for me November 6th, coming up next month. Why? If you don't vote for me, and you vote for anybody else, Here's what's gonna happen, I promise you, gonna happen. Blue team comes in first, red team comes in second, no change, no change. 
That's what's happened for 16 years. That's going to happen again. No doubt. How do we know this? You don't see anybody else campaigning. I, we all know this is going to happen. Blue team comes in first. Red team comes in second. No change. It's going to be righteous. I'm going to vote Democrat because I'm a Democrat. I'm going to vote Republican because I'm a Republican. Be righteous. That's great. Righteous. You can be righteous while you pack your bags and move to North Carolina, South Carolina, or follow him to Florida. <laughs> because that's going to happen. Tennessee, Arizona, you're gone because this state's a disaster and you're not going to stay here. So you can be righteous and leave. Or you can vote for me. You can vote for me and Andrew. You can vote Libertarian November 6th. You can do that. If you do that, one or two things will happen. Number one, we'll win. And if we win, we'll make changes. It'll take time, but we'll make changes. There will be change. And if I'm wrong, you will help me. We'll, why do I say you'll help me? You have to help me. I don't have big party infrastructure. I still need all of you. That's why I'm doing this. I need all of you to help me change. Or next, I'll come in second. And if I come in second, guess what will happen? There'll be a microphone shoved in my face every single day. Larry, how'd you do it? Up here to be going, Andrew, how'd you guys do it? Oh my God, what happened? And we'll talk about all the things I talked about all the time. We'll talk about supporting small business, supporting new businesses, fixing education, supporting farmers. We will talk about all those things again and again and again, and we'll still get change. It'll be even longer, but we'll still get change. If you don't want change, no worries. Vote red or vote blue, you'll get no change. Well done. If you want change, there is no option but the one you're seeing here. The Sharp Policy Ticket, November 6th, is the answer. And if you care and you want this to happen, awesome, here's what you do. Number one, tell people about this campaign. Name recognition is critical. Tell them, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your coworkers, tell people, tell them. Not just that, online, share, share, share everything. Share online until tomorrow. Not just that, if you see any article online that has anything with New York State, anything, put my name in it. Hey, what about Larry Sharp? Put my name in it, everything you can see. If you can't do that, Awesome, donate, LarrySharp.com. Donate, if you can't donate, buy a sign or buy a t-shirt. Do something, help out the campaign. I use the money to get votes. I use the money to do this, so I use it for. So I want votes. If you can get me votes without money, I don't need your money. If you can't, give me the money, I'll get the votes. Doesn't matter, we need votes. I'm telling the truth, right? Look, I'm, I'm the only candidate you've heard that is actually telling you what's happening in this state. I'm the only candidate you've heard who's not just, you know, be, oh, we have to love our teachers or we have to care about our students or giving you that kind of garbage pandering. I don't do that. I tell you what I actually think and what can really happen and I tell you I'm human and I tell you I could be wrong and you'll have to help me out. I want this state to be a state we all want to live in. It can happen. Remember, you have to go to LarrySharp.com. Larry Sharp is with an E and the E stands for? Yes, it does. Thank you guys. Make selfies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did I answer your question about the yeah. farmers? Good. Good. Thank, thank you. Very much. Yes, good. Good seeing you. Thanks thank for coming, my friend. Thank oh, you so thank much. You yes, much. good. Good seeing you. Thank you. Thank you for being a good sport. <laughs> You're a good sport. Thank you, my friend. That was good. I like